Okay guys, welcome to another look at some shmups. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these ones. Um, this week I'm going to be looking at letters H and I, because there's not that many, so hopefully I can get through two bunches of letters. This, this first one is, I didn't even catch the name of it, it's called Hatcha Mecha Fighter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's kind of, what would we say, it looks like you're playing the part of a sea lion and you're shooting aeroplanes with uh, with hamsters riding astride and you're also killing a, a large boar that's hanging out an aeroplane. It's all very, uh, I was going to say Final Fantasy, what's it called? Fantasy Zone I think it is. Kind of nemesis with rather obscure looking creature things. Yep, there, as you probably noticed, there is no sound in this game. Um, <coughs> sounds, well, there probably was sound in the original, but not in MAME, the sound doesn't appear to be supported. But it's all very, very strange. It's a it place quite nice, got to say. The graphics, some nice uh, parallax scrolling going on there. Yeah, you've got to wonder what goes through the minds of some programmers when they're thinking, let's just make a nemesis and we shall put in some strange looking animals. We'll have a sea lion with its arse hanging out the aeroplane and we'll have some small sea lions also with their arse hanging out the, the, the aeroplane. We'll have some parachuting gerbils as well. <laughs> it's just mental. It could only be Japanese. So yeah, that is, let me see what it's called again. Hatcha Mecha Fighter. Don't recall it being ported to anything, and I wonder why. And it's good night from him. Yep, let's move on. Next one up, we have HAL 21. <coughs> now, this. This can only be described as a poor man's Xavius. It's got kind of similar graphics, although they're probably, I would say, they're not as pretty looking as Xavius. It's a bit more kind of dull looking. You can certainly see where they've taken their inspiration from, though. It's even got kind of similar, similar sort of sound as well. And it's got a kind of similar little tune as well. <laughs> Although I would say Xavius is certainly the better game. This is just too bloody hard, this one actually. And the landscapes are all pretty lacklustre as well. But is that power ups you've got? No, it's just points, I would see. Yeah, it's damn hard, let's go again. This was back when ripping off other companies was fair game, nobody really seemed to give a shit. I'm sure companies did give a shit, but they they didn't really uh, pursue. Not like nowadays, if you brought out a, a Call of Duty clone and called it something else, they'd be all over you. But yeah, this is all a bit... Yeah, it's, it's alright, it's quite difficult actually. I mean, look at the number of bullets. Like I said, it's basically it's a poor man's Xavius. If you want to play a game like this, I would recommend you go and play the original. I'm saying the original, maybe this came out before Xavius, who knows, but Xavius is definitely a better game. So that is HAL 21. Right, here we have Haley's Comet. Quite an early game, I didn't actually catch the year there when it came out. It's all fairly linear. Kind of reminds me a wee bit like uh, <coughs> Star Force, though not as good. Star Force is similar kind of jolly wee graphics, um, similar kind of graphical style, but it's got nice, these big sort of uh, spaceship things that you fly across. Well, this one seems to have quite a few kind of power-ups, quite, quite a nice game to play actually. It's got a 
the same kind of wee jolly tune as well. I'm assuming that's Haley's Comet, that blue thing. Nope, must have been power up there. I was too busy sleeping. Oh. Big end of level guardian. I wonder what the first ever game shoot him up to have an end of level guardian. <clears throat> I mean some would argue that Phoenix, the you know, the, the last level in Phoenix with the big mothership was the first one. Possibly. Is it? I don't know. If you know a better answer than Phoenix then put it in the comments below. <coughs> Excuse me. Some flying dustbin lids. Nothing more deadly than that. Yeah, but anyway, listen, that is Haley's Comet. Let's batter on it, it's game over. Now, if this game well, I was gonna say if this game was released in the nineties, it would have been a it would have been the uh, what do you call it? Not approved, it would have been spawned. Ah, uh, hammer away, I was gonna say. What do you call him? Um, MC Hammer, yep, he would have put his name in a game like this. I'm not keen in the way that the helicopter Kenny turns, I'd prefer if it was always Kenny shooting straight up. Kind of similar to Tiger Heli, a wee bit, which is a game I've got a lot of time for. That wee truck's moving up and down, see it? Yeah, it's some nice graphics, I like the wee animation, the wee, the wee soldiers. <laughs> Again, a fairly kind of generic shoot em up, but then let's face it, most shoot em ups are fairly generic because you're shooting stuff. There is only so many ways to, to string a cat, so to speak. The thing is, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shoot 'em ups in the 80s. i am probably say even in, well, yeah, the late 80s and 90s, there was just so many shoot 'em ups. And there was very few, when you consider how many were released, were actually uh, converted. To home systems. I suppose a lot of these games are never even released out outside Japan. There's just so many. I mean, Japan love their shoot 'em ups. This kind of reminds me a wee bit like Swift, actually. But it's very much your sort of realistic graphics as opposed to your sort of fantasy style stuff of like Dodon Patchy. This is all kind of, you know, real helicopters and whatnot. <coughs> Maybe not quite so many in one screen like you're getting here. But that is actually pretty good. So that is Hammer Away. Stop Hammer Time. Right, this one, 1988 by Tato Heavy Unit. Never even heard of this game. Yeah, so it's kind of an r type type thing. Is that skulls that you're shooting? I think it is. What the hell? What the hell? Talking about throwing you in at the deep end. <coughs> How many shoot 'em ups did Tato bring out? My goodness, I mean, I've never, you know, 
I've never even heard of half of them. Again, as I was saying, I think probably a lot of these games are never released outside Japan. This is tough. Nice graphics, got to say, but it's bloody hard. Another sinister kind of monster. Just a, a big worm made up of skulls. <laughs> Trying to destroy these flamethrower things. Come on, come on. Ah, bollocks. Let's go for one more shot. Very, very difficult. Very, very nice looking game, though pretty tough. A rather uninteresting name heavy unit. Anyway, Hellfire by Toplan. Now they're, they've always got good shooters, so I'm hopeful this is going to be pretty good, this one. Oh, you cheeky sword. Yeah, it's your standard horizontal fear. Not quite as uh, lush looking as your R types or heavy unit, which we just looked at. Die, we touch this? Nope, we don't. Ah, right, okay, press another fire button. Ah, damn it. Press another fire button actually changes the direction in which you, you shoot. So, what you need to do is try and pick what one is best. You really need to remember to change it back to forward firing again most of the time. Ah. Yeah, that's not bad, that's Hellfire, that's by Topline. Now this is called, <coughs> excuse me, Helifire. <laughs> this is uh, obviously not a, uh, what do you call it? This is obviously not a game released by them what made Don Don Patchy. Nope, this is by Sega, I think it is. Did I catch that right? I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, this is, this is the kind of stuff that we used to play back in, I don't know, 1982, 1981, possibly. <laughs> I do remember playing a game similar to this, was it... Oh, what was it called? I can't remember, you basically looked through... It was similar graphics to this, but you looked through an actual real life, kind of real life, you looked through a sort of periscope type thing. 
but it was just grey, black and white graphics. How did I get through there? I don't, obviously. Yeah, it's funny how you look at some games like this. I mean, I know they were very early games, but they're pretty boring. <laughs> but, you know what? Like I say all the time, if it wasn't for stuff like this, we'd never have what we've got now. You know, you've got to start somewhere. You can't just instantly produce a classic. <clears throat> Yay! Ah, oh, you cheeky sod. I'm gonna die here. Boom! <laughs> yeah, anyway, that is heli fire. Right, this bad boy is called Horizon. I didn't actually see who released it. It was quite unusual actually, it's, uh, you can probably see there, it's kinda pseudo 3D. <clears throat> You're actually moving um, on three different planes, so you can see that I'm moving obviously further away from the screen and then obviously towards the screen. So there's kinda three levels, you know, of uh, enemies that you've got to, <coughs> excuse me, got to try and take out when they come attack you sort of horizontally. You've also got the, the airborne ones. It's almost like uh, Space Patrol, no it's not Space Patrol, Moon Patrol, whereby you're, you're obviously moving from left to right and you're having to shoot enemies above and also shoot enemies in front of you, but this is the difference with this one is you've got sort of three levels, three planes of action. Sounds like an advert for one of these uh, sort of uh, LED games back in the 80s. <laughs> three lanes of action! Some nice uh, parallax scrolling. Again, it was another one of these games that wasn't ported. I don't think there's been any games that we've looked at so far that were actually that was knowingly ported to any computers. But again, it's probably just because there was literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these games getting pumped out. 80s, <coughs> 90s. Probably up to about sort of 95, and then you know, stuff like Street Fighter and that kind of took over. Although they still, Atlas and Cave do still, uh, <coughs> excuse me, do still make games for the Japanese market. You know, the shoot 'em ups are a genre that's never really died a death across there. It's a genre I would love to see come back. Um, I mean, you do still get the cage. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. <coughs> it's a genre you do occasionally. You know, you do still get the occasional game coming out for sort of consoles and that, but in the main it's pretty much, it's just like, you know, rehashing the original games, but it'd be great to, to see these games getting, you know, put out now. But anyway, that is Horizon. Right, this one is called, let me, what's it called? Hot Dog Storm. <laughs> and it quite literally is a hot dog. Although sadly there doesn't appear to be any hot dogs featuring in an actual game. And rather than usually, it's a game where you instantly get an end of level guardian. Always oh, dispatched fairly easily. Ah, it's quite unusual just to get a big spaceship like that. You know, appear at the very start. Usually you've got to kind of work your way through the level and then get to the end of the level. And you'll maybe get a, or maybe mid level you'll get some kind of big spaceship thing to take out, but. Again, this is similar to, I can't remember, was it Hellfire, I think it was? The, it looks kind of similar to Swiv. You know, it's all helicopters and tanks and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure what the wee, uh, 
lightning bolts give you. Power-ups are plenty. The thing is, when you're making a video like this and you're playing so many shoot 'em ups it's easy to get a bit, can he? A bit sort of carte blanche about the whole thing, you know. Or bored is another word, maybe. Um, you know, you're playing all these one after another. But, you know, <clears throat> if you look at each individual game, well, yeah, there's been a couple of couple of not so good ones, but if you look at each game on its own merits, you know, they're, they're fantastic. You know, if you like shoot 'em ups then, uh, which I dare say you will if you're watching this video, because if not, why are you watching this? It's only shoot 'em ups, you'll not get any Call of Duty or anything like that in this uh, video. <laughs> um, yeah, if you like your shoot 'em ups then MAME is like all your Christmases at once. You know, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of these things. I mean, I've never, I've been playing shoot 'em ups for years, and I've got to say, I don't think I've played a game yet in this video that I've actually heard of. I don't think I've played any of these games before. So it just goes to show just how many shoot 'em ups there are. You know, it's incredible the number. Now, was this the first proper end of the level, Guardian? I think that little one was just a little warm up thing. Think about a lot of these games, and this one's included. <coughs> there's very, very little originality. You know, it's the same spaceships and that kind of stuff. And whereas some of the other, you, know, you do get the occasional shooter that it uses, like uh, you know, it's like giant spiders and crabs and that kind of stuff. You know, they tend to make more interesting bodies. Stuff like this is just a straightforward uh, sort of spaceship thing. Still nice to play but you know not quite as creative as other stuff. So that is Hot Dog Storm. Right this one by Technosoft is called Hyper Duel. 1993 it was released. So I suppose you could see this is this is certainly quite recent as far as our uh, shoot 'em ups go. Now again, it's, I'm not going to say it's similar to R-Type, but it is kind of similar to R-Type. It's maybe similar to R-Type insofar as it's left to right, horizontal scrolling, and it's got spaceships and bullets. So I guess that makes <laughs> virtually every single one of these games the same. Um, but yeah, nice, nice, nice graphics. You can certainly see where it's got its... Uh, Inspiration from though. I like the fact that you've got the two wee kind of uh, drones who actually they can fly off on their own uh, and do their own thing. That is very kind of mode seven ish, isn't it? It's, you could imagine a game like this in the SNES. Well, apparently the SNES isn't actually the greatest machine for doing shoot 'em ups. Um, it's not. Apparently, I think the Mega Drive has got a faster processor. Um, and so the, the SNES wasn't really that great. That's why there's a lot less shoot 'em ups in the SNES than there are in the Mega Drive because the Mega Drive was apparently a better machine. The hardware was just designed for sort of two-dimensional stuff. Yeah, this is this is really nice. This is definitely worth a, a play. <coughs> so that is Hyper Duel. Right, the first one 
beginning with H. <coughs> now, I was in two minds whether to include this. This is quite an iconic game, I Robot, made by Atari. Um, it was very, very sort of uh, genre defining. I mean, it was there was nothing else like it <coughs> when this game came out. You know, it used polygons, which was just kind of pretty much unheard of. Now, I would apologise now because I've this is only about probably the second or third time I've ever played the game. I think it was only, I say recently, um, it's only been in the sort of later versions of MAME where this game actually became playable. And I think you needed kind of quite a, quite a decent uh, specky PC, so my sort of PCs from years back wouldn't have been uh, capable of playing this. But So this is really sort of kind of the first time I've actually played it. I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Uh, you obviously move up and down, left and right, and it was telling me here to to get five reds. I'm not quite sure how I managed that. Yep, yeah, I mean this game does look it, it kind of it's dated. It's not it's not aged particularly well, but you know you need to remember this came out was it 1983? It was very very much ahead of its time. I think the original arcade games uh, versions of this go for quite a quite a, a few quid. I open, don't jump. Get three days. Oh, I've got it down from five to three. I'm really got no idea. I don't seem to be actually. Am I even getting any score? It's hard to tell. Oh, I'm now at least... Ah, now I can shoot the eye. Hey, there we go. I think I've... Have I completed that level? Oh, man, he's just taken off. Ah, oh, here we go. Well, I can categorically say this is the furthest I've ever, ever actually got in this game. Which is no surprise, considering... <coughs> I think this is the second time I've ever played it. So, yeah, it's, it's a game of its time. I mean, it was it was very... I says it was so different from everything else that was out there, but interesting, definitely worth a check out. That is iRobot. Now this one, <coughs> this is by Atlas, or is it Cave? I didn't actually notice, I think it's Atlas. Um, this is called Abara. Now I noticed there's two versions, there's like the black edition, no idea. Uh, Cave, yeah there we go, it's actually by Cave. They've always, <laughs> they've always got all this manga style artwork associated with their games, I've no idea, because I don't think it really needs it, but I think it just it's appeals to it appeals to the Japanese market. Again, never ever heard of this game, never played it, never even seen it. But, as you can tell, you can see here, it's just pretty mental, I mean look at the amount of debris flying about. Good thing is they've made the, the the bullets purple, so you can easily see what you're trying to avoid, and basically everything else is just debris flying about. I love games like this, though. So it's just they're so much fun to play. I mean, what is not to like about destroying stuff? This is insane. Can you imagine playing this? I mean, I'm playing this on a monitor. Can you imagine playing this on a massive arcade uh, monitor? A big horizontal monitor. That would be pretty awesome. But it's got a distinctive cave, it says it's got the manga artwork and it's just got the real beautiful kind of hand drawn graphics and it's got just mayhem on top of mayhem, beautiful game. <laughs> this is bullet hell shooters at their very very best. And it's good night from him. Oh, what am I talking about? I thought he was dead there. It's good night for me, in fact. Yeah, that is a barra. That is worth checking out. 
Right, this next one is Image Fight, and it's by Irem, who made R-Type. Now, this game came out after R-Type, I think R-Type was 1986. 86, 87, this is 1988, so this is actually a later game. And it's pretty much in the sort of the kind of what's it called again. Um, it's just it's a, a generic shooter. Funny, somehow <coughs> it's not. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not as it's not as pretty looking as our type. I mean, our, our type is an iconic game. It really, really, it just it set the level for shoot 'em ups being really beautiful looking. You know, they're all hand drawn graphics. It was all organic sort of stuff. Um, whereas this this is kind of just generic spaceship things again, which I was mentioning earlier on. Hard to kind of get overly enthusiastic about something like this, but again, if you base it on its own merits, it's probably quite a good shoot 'em up. Coming for Iron, I'm sure it will be. You know, it's uh, certainly got a good pedigree, plenty of power ups as well. I can see you know, all the uh, ship there that's shooting to the side. So yeah, anyway, that is Image Fight. Again, I don't recall that game ever being ported to anything. Emma go by Acom. Yep, that company's nobody, no one has ever, ever heard of. <laughs> right, bonus points, what game is this based on? It actually looks like it's been based on two games, it's obviously Centipede, or Millipede, we'll go for Centipede, but it's also got a bit of Galaxian flung in as well, you've got the wee guys kind of dive bombing you. I love how it's uh, sort of kind of set in a garden type place. Well, I imagine it's in a garden, but you've got the scrolling landscape, the scrolling starfield in the back. <laughs> Again, never heard this game. I've not heard it. Apart from iRobot, iRobot is the only game I've actually heard of that I've looked at so far. This one feels fairly basic compared to some of the ones we've looked at, especially compared to a cave game. <laughs> Interesting to know whether this was trackball, like uh, like centipede. Aye, it's all right. It's not. Doesn't it break any. Any grounds? That was a uh, Imago. Right, this one. This is this game in the hunt by Irem again, 1993. This is a this is a strangely overlooked game in my opinion. Um, it's not a game you hear people talking about very much. Never ever seen it in arcades. I mean, I, didn't, I don't think there was any arcades near me in 1993. But this is, you know, graphically this is beautiful. This is a real return to form in my opinion for Irem. You know, the graphics are just beautiful. It's got. It looks very, very similar, in my opinion, to uh, to the Metal uh, Slug series. It'd be interesting to know whether the guys that wrote this were involved in Metal Slug because it does have that very, very distinct kind of you know artwork to it. This is beautiful. You're obviously playing the uh, a submarine under the sea, but then if you go near to the surface, you've also got, also got helicopters and whatnot trying to kill you above. If you go right to the very top you can actually use your machine gun. Like so. But this is gorgeous looking, it really is it's a nice looking game. It's one of the best shoot 'em ups graphically in my opinion. You know, when you think that all these graphics were all hand-drawn, you know, 
not like games nowadays, they use computers to do to do a lot of them. And again, this don't believe this game was ever ported to anything. I wonder why, I guess they just probably thought that <coughs> that things had moved on by 1993. I mean, by 1993, well, I had a Commodore Amiga at that point, but I suppose people, the consumer, they were looking for 3D games. They weren't interested in two-dimensional games. That's probably part of the reason that games like this were never ported, just because they thought nobody would be interested in actually playing them, which is a shame because, you know, it's gorgeous. But, you know, we're lucky the fact that we've got main so we can now enjoy the real arcade versions. But yeah, that is in the hunt. That is definitely worth checking out if you've never played it before. Right, this is Insectorix by Tato1989, another shoot 'em up. Right, this is a cross between, I like, I like to do my crosses, this is a cross between Nemesis Fantasy Zone meets Rainbow Islands. You can see there, um, the graphics do look very Rainbow Islands, or very cutesy. I always like how all Tato games have all got the same font. See the score? I think that font is exactly the same as it was. Um, you know, Galaga, all these games. You look back at all the early games, Rally X, I think they all had the same font. I suppose it just kind of gives it that Namco uh, look. Sorry, not Namco, Tato y look. This is actually quite good fun. Really, really pretty looking graphics. But yeah, for a shoot 'em up fan, you're absolutely spoiled rotten with Meme. You can imagine if Meme never existed, all these games would have just been lost in time. That would be a big, big. Big, big shame if that had happened. Yep, that is Insector X. Right, this is the first Invaders by Xenotone Microsec. This is one of the many uh, bootleg copies of Space Invaders. Now they've just uh, now this game don't turn up your volume. Um, this game doesn't have any sound, or it probably did, but it's just not emulated in Mame. You can see what they've done here is they've just taken the sprites straight out of Space Invaders, and they've kind of uh, merged it with a sort of Galaxian type type game, and renamed it and sold it as their own. Aye, if this, this, if Space Invaders and Galaxian were to father a child, then this would be the child. This would be the love child of Galaxian and Space Invaders. It's kind of a cross between both game types. And in my opinion, it's not really, it's not worked out particularly well. I think I'll stick to Galaxian for my uh, dive bombing uh, shoot 'em up action, and I think I prefer my Space Invaders just as it should be. So that was Invader's Revenge. <clears throat> this one is Invinco Deep Scan. Invinco Deep Scan, I beg your pardon. Now this is kind of more similar to the game I was talking about. Was it Seawolf? The game that I mentioned earlier on where you actually looked through a periscope. But it was I'm sure it was black and white graphics. But this is very, very kind of similar looking. This is probably a bit better looking than the one I remember. What happened there? Right, so you control the sort of the 
aircraft carrier thing at the top <coughs> and you can see there you've got a little radar so what you've got to try and do is anticipate when to drop the bombs or the, the mines because you know they, they take a wee while to sink so you've got to kind of anticipate looking at the radar and then plan ahead I mean this was obviously one of the, the very very early arcade games and yeah looking at some of the games like this now you think why did I, how did I actually, how did a game like this hold my interest? But the reason it held your interest was because this was all there was. There was nothing else like it, so it was, you know, it was entertaining for its time. But fortunately things picked up pretty quick and definitely got better. Again, there appears to be a complete lack of sound again, it's probably just because the meme hasn't correctly emulated it. So yeah, that was Invinso Deep Scan. Now this is just called Invinso. <laughs> now, where do you even begin with this one? It's they've quite clear, and this is made by Sega. There you go, Sega in 1979. Um, I mean, this, can you believe that this is the company that went on to make Space Harrier and Outrun? Yeah, they've shamelessly ripped the sound from Space Invaders, they have probably put out a competition to school children asking them to design some baddies, I mean, what are you fighting, you're fighting at the very top, the little yellow thing looks like a little sweet, you've got an Asterix, which I've just destroyed, you've got a, um, I don't know, You've got what looks like an ampersand, no not an ampersand, the at sign at the top. You've got little emojis at the bottom, the blue things. You've got white flashing triangles. I mean seriously there's absolutely no no creativity or thought went into the baddies or if this was the best they could come up with then dearie me, thank goodness things moved on. But yeah, it's, it's Space Invaders with crap graphics, that's about, that's about the best way to describe it I would say. Although it is, it is in colour, we'll give them that. <laughs> 1979, yeah. It's interesting that they just completely ripped off and stole the sound effects off from Space Invaders. I mean, that is Space Invaders. Although that's been made up. But the fire sound and the sound when you actually hit a body. That is Space Invaders. I mean, look at the missile bases, it's just, it's just little zigzaggy lines. Seriously, guys. Hmm. Yeah, not every game back in the <coughs> back in the day was good. You also got some fish like this. <laughs> right, enough of that. That is Invincible by Sega. Right, this one is called IPN Invader. Bonus points for guessing what game have they ripped off here. <laughs> okay, not content with ripping off the graphics, they've also nicked the sound as well. Funnily enough, it doesn't really feel that good. I don't know if you're noticing a slight kind of... It's not crisp, crystal smooth, crystal clear. It's not overly smooth compared to, say, Space Invaders. I mean, they've even nicked the sound of this, you know, the, the UFO as well. Shame on you, IPN. I suppose one thing they have done is at least have improved the colour, rather than use these little uh, bands of uh, coloured plastic, sort of coloured overlays, they've actually, they've actually figured out how to make the sprites different colours. Thank <laughs> you. 
funny thing is, <coughs> probably a lot of the games that, I, that we played in the arcades probably weren't even the original games, were probably bootlegs, but aye, we didn't know any different. So anyway, that is IPN Invader. And the very, very last game, guys, is called The Invaders. It doesn't even tell you who wrote this one. <laughs> right, okay, it looks like they've just... Uh, the guy, the programmer's been dragged into the room saying, right, I need you to write a Space Invaders, but at least try and make it look a wee bit different. So, that's what he's done. He's shamefully ripped off the first one, two, three... The first three levels from the top, he's copied the sprites. The second two levels, he's made the sprites look a wee bit different. But we know what you're up to. We can, we can tell the resemblance. And they've gone for a rather crude sort of missile base. What oh, a horrible noise for a spaceship. <laughs> Aye, anyway, listen guys, that is it. That is the last game of this look at from Letters H and I. Hope you enjoyed watching it, guys. Um, you know, please put your comments below. I always enjoy reading all your comments. If you've not subscribed and you want to see more stuff by myself, please hit that like, subscribe button. And as usual, guys, thank you very, very much for watching.